Hey everybody, I'm going to talk about rural escapism and anarcho-primitivism, right? Two things which I consider to be um, in the need of more uh, critique, right? So a lot of young men these days um, and in prior days, when they, they basically they, they come out of public schooling, they become young adults, right? And they begin to learn when they become, shall we say, red-pilled, they, they begin to learn that most of the things that they learned in public school, maybe not most, a lot of the things they learned, especially about history, are just completely wrong. A lot of the things that their trusted authorities, like doctors and parents, uh, taught them about, for example, nutrition and just living in general uh, are totally wrong. And, and many things that they, should, they think they should know, or that they should know in order to be prepared for life, they simply were never taught. And this leads many of them to be traumatized, right? They're sort of traumatized by the fact that everything they thought they knew was wrong, and they respond to that by rejecting everything. Everything. And that leads to them accepting some really zany philosophies because their new rule is to reject everything that came from authority simply because all their prior authorities let them down. And that makes it really easy for people to... For example, some people are really susceptible to the conspiracy theories, uh, the Tartaria one and the, the Flat Earth one, and sometimes the urine drinking stuff. Uh, there's a lot of really zany stuff out there that if you examine it even just a little bit with some intellect, uh, with some critical thinking and, and, and looking up the evidence and things like that, maybe there's even theories that you really want to believe, but you just can't because you realize, well, this, this is just wrong and stupid. But the more traumatized you are from realizing that everything you were taught in the past was a lie, the more susceptible you are to simply believing everything that anyone tells you, as long as they tell it to you under the guise of, I am not your authority, I am not your previous authority that let you down, I am some random guy on the internet, you can trust me. So that, you know. Anyways, that brings us to things like rural escapism and anarcho-primitivism, which I believe to be a philosophy that is untenable, which means if you follow it through to its logical conclusion, um, or basically you, you just follow it through using basic critical thinking, analytical thinking, you find it doesn't result in any... Um, it, do, it doesn't result in, in any positive uh, benefit uh, to the people that are proponents of the philosophy. Uh, it basically only exists for them to score philosophical points when they're debating you about it. Um, it has no practical application to reality, right? So people will say that you need to relocate to a rural area as a matter of necessity as a strategic thing because of the times we live in, right? Now, that's pretty fair. Obviously, cities are in a pretty bad state these days. They're nothing like what they used to be. Uh, many of the benefits of living in a city are still there, but you have a lot of bad things. I don't need to go on and on about all these examples of the reasons you shouldn't live in a city. Uh, Soros DA is one of them. Demographics is another. High crime is another. Uh, you don't have the right, the legal rights that you used to. Nowadays, crimes are, are often prosecuted through the lens of race. So certain demographic groups are allowed to commit crimes and basically just they just keep getting let out of jail over and over again via charities and programs and activist DAs who are basically their job is to uh, let people of certain demographics out of jail over and over again. And if you are of a certain other demographic or certain other demographic groups, uh, you don't even have the right to self-defense anymore. The DA will just, even if you get let off in a self-defense case, you're still going to have to pay $25,000 attorney fees in a case where you should never even have been arrested in the first place. There's, there's just a lot of really bad things like that going on that you're going to get exposed to a lot more in a city than you would in a rural area. Now, all that is fair and good. All those are fair criticisms of cities and a lot more things that I could have touched on that I didn't. Uh, the problem is when you take that and expand it, um, that mentality to the point where you simply think cities in general shouldn't exist. Modern uh, agriculture... Um, all modern technology shouldn't exist. We should simply go back to living the way the Amish did. The entire idea of the city-state was bad to begin with. Um, and there's a couple, there's a lot of problems with this. The main problem I see is all the Stone Age people, or all the people who didn't want to use any new technology or didn't want to basically form nation-states based around cities, they were all conquered and destroyed. Now, I know a lot of people cringe when you say might is right, but the harsh reality of might is right is quite simply, it doesn't matter that you're right if you're dead, right? That makes sense. You could form the most eloquent philosophical argument in the world, 
and then you're dead and it doesn't matter anymore. So in a sense, you have to be right, but you also have to have the might. And if your society is unable to be successful following your philosophical guidelines against other societies, it doesn't matter if you're right because you're all dead. So obviously, if you decide to form a non-technological society where everyone just lives in rural areas, there's no technology, there's no arms production, because you need infrastructure to basically to make mines, to have these massive high-tech forges that create the, the high-tech guns that we have nowadays. To have that whole process go on, uh, you, can, you need to have cities, right? There's obviously going to have to be, there needs to be universities for the engineers to get developed and all that kind of thing. So uh, nothing that we do nowadays would be possible without cities. Uh, the, the mindset that cities in and of themselves are bad and we should leave them because they're bad, I don't think that's a tenable philosophy to have. I think... If you want to be realistic, limit yourself to, to the mindset that, yes, it is a good idea in this day and age to relocate strategically to a rural area simply because of the way things are right now, right? Um, cities 100 years ago, ironically, with much less technology than today, were probably much more enjoyable places. Um, obviously, with, with some exceptions, there was much less extreme violent crime in all the cities in, in America. Um, but they weren't better places because there was a less technology. They were better places because society wasn't in a, in a state of absolute and total degeneracy. It wasn't being held together by basically threads. Um, there weren't people attacking every from the institution of family to the institution of marriage to all the public institutions that are supposed to ser serve the public, the actual institutions. Uh, they weren't all under attack. Um, they were starting to attack them back then, but they didn't have their claws everywhere yet. So uh, anarcho-primitivism is a lot of different ways it could be uh, applied. Uh, some people will say, okay, well, I think we should just go back to the technology that the Amish have, right? Even the technology that the Amish have, that the Amish use, st you still need cities to produce, to develop and innovate and produce that kind of uh, technology. Yep. You can talk about like very small scale artisan mining uh, and things like that. And Every village has a forge, which is kind of not realistic economically. Uh, you can brainstorm about those things, but those things don't work. Uh, in practice, it would be very difficult to be making wagon wheels um, in a bunch of little tiny villages, right? Without any kind of a slightly more centralized production, without like even small cities of 20,000 people, right, would certainly help to be able to produce even the most basic technology that the Amish have. But obviously the more pressing argument is simply if you limit yourself to that technology, you will very easily get conquered by um, other societies that choose to use more technology than you, that choose to have cities and live in cities, right? I personally choose not to live in a city, not because I think cities are inherently bad, simply because the current political and social landscape in cities is not desirable um, to live in, to get to get married and raise a family in, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, but anyways, if if you were to now, some people have a counter argument. They say, well, the Amish still exist and they're doing pretty well. They only exist basically riding on our coat, like because of our protection, right? Because they have American society, industrial society around them, right? If we weren't around them, forming this massive political body, protecting them, allowing them to exist they would be wiped out by whoever, right? Because they're legally protected by an industrial modern government, they continue to exist. Virtually all other areas in the world, the Stone Age tribes, and the Amish are obviously way past Stone Age, but even, even so, uh, the people with no technology that want to live that way are basically have gotten wiped out. There are obviously are so, still some hunter-gatherer tribes in some areas, but... Um, so... Those are my thoughts on the matter. Um, Anarcho-primitivism, not a tenable philosophy. Um, the idea that the city is inherently bad and we should all escape the city and move to the rural area uh, is not, the escape mentality is not really good to have, right? The strategic relocation mentality because of current situation in society, okay, that's what makes sense. One final thing I should mention, living in a rural area is not easy, right? But it's also not as hard as city people imagine it to be, right? Oh, I don't know if I would like that, right? Uh, people imagine rural life to be very difficult. Now, now, obviously, other people imagine it to be very easy, and then they move to a rural area, and they actually realize it is kind of hard, right? Uh, people like me, who kind of grew up in a suburban area that was kind of rural, it's, it's no surprise to us. You know, we've lived in an area, 
area like that our whole lives. But I think sometimes inner, inner city people imagine rural life to be either really, really easy or really, really, either they don't want to do it because it's uh, really hard or uh, they really, really want to do it because they think it's really easy and then they fail when they try to move to a rural area, they just can't do it. So keep your expectations where they should be. Uh, life is a little bit slightly more difficult, rougher in a rural area than it is in a city, but it's also a lot more fulfilling, right? Uh, you can spend a lot more time in the rural area. You also have a lot more options to sort of craft your life to be more centered around, like your job, your income, uh, everything that you do every day can be made to be more centered around your homestead and your forest and your land. Um, it can be made to sort of be inclusive in that way, whereas in the city, it's very clearly delimited. Like, this is your apartment. Or if you have tons and tons of money, this is your house, right? You, this is your apartment. This is the road you take to drive to work. This is your workplace. You spend hour, eight hours a day here, five days a week. This is the park that you go to to relax. This is the gym that you go to to exercise, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in rural area, you can you you can sort of create a more magical existence, right? Uh, in a rural area where there's a lot more time spent outside and there's a lot less commuting in between distinct places that serve a distinct purpose. That's all I have to say before I start rambling. Hope you all have an excellent evening and stay tuned for my next video.